Thank you for choosing to attend this presentation about a policy initiative that resulted in an enhanced opportunity for our undergraduate students learning languages. My name is Jane Sokolowski and I'm the director of Brown University Center for Language Studies and this is where the initiative started. And this here is the end product, the results. But let me step back a little to explain how we got here to the Certificate in Intercultural Competence. Post-pandemic, we were ready to try the next thing for our students learning languages. We weren't really sure what that next thing was, but we did have our goals. We wanted to enhance the undergraduate experience. We wanted to focus on languages. We wanted to make it accessible to all languages, and we really wanted to recognize students' commitment to language courses. So we gathered the players who are part of the language community at my university. We have this us at the Center for Language Studies. We have individual language departments. We have some departments or, or units that host or house several languages, the world languages and cultures, Slavic studies and East Asian studies. The timing of this attempt to do the next thing for our students um, was really fortuitous. It came on the heels of the pandemic. We were all coming back to the university and we were excited to try new things. So the discussions began around April 2021 and over a year later, the certificate was approved in May 2022. The drivers and the impetus for the creation of this certificate in intercultural competence were several. I think in general, there was an increased emphasis on experiential learning. There was an emphasis and an acknowledgement of essential learning outcomes related to college education. And there was an uptick on campus and with our faculty around the engagement with intercultural competence. Also, the language learning community in general, internationally and nationally, had also embraced very much um, intercultural competence. Let's first focus on the increased emphasis with experiential learning. So research has shown that employers are very likely to consider hiring a recent college graduate who has completed some sort of internship, project-based learning or applied learning. So basically, employers like internships, and you see at the bottom, employers also like study abroad programs. F students also like internships. In the same sort of study, we see that both employers and college students appreciate and value internships. They also value, although students value them more, field projects in diverse communities with people from different backgrounds and cultures. They also value study abroad programs. Study abroad is also popular, even though it's not quite, the long programs are not as popular as they used to be. Not only do employers and students appreciate experiential learning, so do universities. Furthermore, in addition to the experiential learning opportunities, there's been a greater emphasis on essential learning outcomes that result in a college education. So the American Association of Colleges and Universities stresses four essential learning outcomes. The knowledge, um, graduates should have a knowledge of human cultures, intellectual and practical skills, personal and social responsibility, and integrative and applied learning upon completing college. And so we see when we look at two of these, the, let's take first personal and social responsibility, that intercultural knowledge and competence are part of that as are working with diverse communities. If we look at knowledge of human cultures, they list languages as being important. In order to judge these essential learning uh, outcomes, we have a set of value rubrics of 16 value ru rubrics, which when we look at them more closely, we'll see align quite, 
quite directly with what we do for language learning already. For example, there's a, there's a rubric on intercultural knowledge and com competence. There's one for local and global civic engagement, for global learning, for critical thinking, ethical reasoning, inquiry and analysis, written communication, as well as the oral communication, all of things that are part of our language learning. In addition to experiential learning, the emphasis on essential learning outcomes, we also notice this uptick on interest in intercultural competence. Um, for on, the, on the national level or international level, the MLA report has been telling us since 2007 that we should focus on transcultural competence. And the most recent report talks about how we should talk about the importance and value of language learning. Actful in its many documents that they put out includes culture. The performance descriptors include cultural awareness as one. The revised world readiness standards with the five C's includes cultures. The revised can do statements include intercultural communication as one of their benchmarks, as well as a reflection tool for that. And for a faculty, I think that pandemic afforded us so many opportunities to, to participate and watch webinars on social justice, webinars on intercultural competence, that we too were becoming more informed of intercultural competence and how it can be integrated into our language classes. This confluence of factors was really positive in trying to figure out our goal of how we can enhance language education and how we can make languages have a broader footprint on our campus and to help our students become members of a large community of language learners so that they could say not only hey i do stem but hey i do languages we wanted to increase this engagement and enthusiasm for our field the center for language studies mission is to promote the teaching and learning of all of all languages. So of course, we took this charge and came up with the goal of making languages a part of undergraduate culture. And if this making languages a larger part of undergraduate culture increased enrollments, so much the better. What we ended up doing was thinking about the challenges that we were faced with in order to survive and thrive. And it basically boiled down to how do we give meaning to the study of languages? How do we give meaning to the internships and in study abroad our students do where they use the languages that they are learning? And how do we encourage students to take that next course, not to stop learning languages? And how do we connect a student's study of languages to their other academic disciplines? Or if they specifically want to keep that separate, how do we make their study of languages very rigorous as well as having the rigorous major that they have chosen? And how do we recognize the student dedication and make their achievement visible to the outside world, to future employers, to their parents, to their friends? So with these goals in mind, in addition to the challenges just mentioned, there was also the fact of the the data that was confronting us. So we have had studying uh, in fall 2023, 1,200 students. These students were enrolled in our beginning, intermediate, and advanced language courses. And we're proud of that number. That's a fine number. That's a good number. But when we look then at the number of students who graduated with a major in modern language, the number of students who have a concrete recognition of their dedication to languages, we found, unfortunately, in my opinion, that in May 2023, out of the 1,200 students who at some point in their careers took a beginning intermediate or advanced language course, that only 30 ended up majoring in the language. And so with this data, we just said to ourselves, or I just said to myself, how do we recognize those 1,200 students and their faculty? How do we get this number to be more than 30? How do we get this number that recognizes student achievement in languages to be higher so that students can come from our university with 
uh, outward sign of their expertise and dedication and commitment to languages. The solution for us was a credential. And Brown University has something that's relatively new. It's called a certificate. And a certificate always includes four or five courses plus experiential learning. It's not a minor with just fewer courses. One of the big components is the fact that there is experiential learning. And so our language students are already doing experiential learning. Study abroad is experiential learning. Doing an international internship is. Doing a local internship where you use your language. Those all count. So this made quite a lot of sense to have a certificate. We then had to, to decide on the naming of the certificate. And I think that uh, the certi calling it the Certificate in Intercultural Competence was the right decision. It's a word that is known outside of our field. It's known outside of academia. It will be understood by others. This Certificate in Intercultural Competence, the notion of a certificate, is really helpful because that gives them students the formal recognition that is put on their transcript. And then the certificate with its uh, obligatory component of experiential learning, along with the course requirements, the foundational courses that we have uh, designed, including the language courses that they take, they all prepare students for careers. And so this career readiness component was also very important. We had this idea, but of course we wanted to make sure that the students were also interested. The survey that we, we sent out uh, came back with a very positive response rate from the students. Those who said maybe let us know that they weren't sure exactly what the details were, but they were very enthusiastic. Just last week, the student at the bottom here uh, wrote asking if, um, if, the, if the certificate was still a, an option for her because it would be amazing to have those efforts with her Spanish courses shown with a certificate. I get a lot of emails about this. I think it's very positive for students. I think it's also positive for an increased presence of languages on campus. So let me talk a little bit about the implementation and the approval. Um, we this implementation required outreach to campus partners um, that were external to languages, so that helped us helped us to increase the footprint of languages across campus. We needed to work with the deans, the curriculum um, re review board. It was very helpful to speak with other people so that we were able to explain it in terms that they understood, and that helped us to help our students to explain intercultural competence to um, to also to others whom they encounter. We worked with language departments and programs as partners, and we also, in order to give our students the opportunities to have these uh, area elective courses that are required, we had to reach out to other departments. So we were reaching out to religious studies, music, linguistics, anthropology, history, political science, sociology, and many more. We It was something that uh, was very exciting for us to have these connections with other people and definitely help the advisors, the, the faculty who are doing advising, uh, and have undergraduate students who want to learn languages to get them to be enthusiastic about the choices the students are making with languages. Because the certificate is designed in such a way that it is very, gives very clear guidelines and pathways for student learning. So this was very deliberate. One of the big arguments for the certificate was that it showed an obvious pathway and a well-structured plan for students' language study. Uh, it gave the, the foundational course, provided them with the knowledge, skills, and attitudes about intercultural competency. The, the certificate requirements requires real-world experiences. It requires them to take a capstone where they work on a digital portfolio that, it, that, that gets them to explain and display these language classes, the experiential learning, the, the notion and ideas of intercultural competence to others. And then at the end, they have this formal recognition of a certificate that um, they look forward to achieving and they're very happy to have this outward recognition of all the dedication that they have made to their language classes and uh, study abroad or internships. 
So let's talk first about the requirement number one, which is a foundational course, Introduction to the Theory of Intercultural Competence. Um, students learn about the theory and they actively reflect on readings. Uh, they gives what what's, we find very helpful about this course is that it gives students a common language with the students in the cohort to be able to talk about uh, intercultural competence and be able to talk about, you know, the knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values. And it, the, at this point, students also have to choose the culture and language of focus. Sometimes they're in, they're taking more than one language class, and they have to decide which one will be the focus. Uh, the topics of the foundational course um, are, are classic sort of intercultural competence uh, topics, but we also focus on the language because language is very important to us in our certificate. So we've got a week on language like linguistics, on language and culture, and on nonverbal communication. The assignments range from interviewing people from their culture, writing a written self-assessment where they have to reflect on themselves as the other, a research paper related to their culture, a video analysis of a film or series that takes place in their culture, and then a group scenario presentation where different cultures come together and then solve a conflict. Requirement number two are the language courses, so they have to take a minimum of two courses, and the level which is uh, required is determined by the language department. Uh, the requirement number three is an area studies elective, so that can be in English or in the language. And so if it is in the language, that would be three language classes that the student has taken as part of the certificate. Uh, but it could also be in English, but in another department. Requirement number three is the um, experiential learning, uh, study abroad, international or domestic internship. While they're doing this experiential learning, they also have to, they have access to Canvas where they have to complete certain certain um, assignments. Uh, we try to make these assignments thought, thought, thought provoking as well as fun. So they do discoveries. Lots of times there's images re, um, related to it. Uh, discovery of place, of nutrition, of surprise, of symbol, and of media. Uh, the final requirement is the capstone. They can take this once all of those other requirements have been completed. It's a half credit course that meets once a week. Uh, they work on the experiential learning assignments that they had done during their study abroad or internship. They create a digital portfolio and they prepare a public presentation. I just wanted to give a shout out to my colleague Elsa Belmont Flores, who is back at Brown. I'm teaching the uh, inaugural section of our first capstone. The digital portfolio, just to touch on that a little bit, includes a professional statement showing that they have the, the like professional writing skills, a resume, a sample work from classes, from, from two classes. Um, they have to create a video that showcases their language skills, and then they write a final reflection. I like what the, um, the, the AAUNC, American Association of Universities and Colleges, uh, how they talk about um, what it, about the portfolio and how it helps the students make sense of his or her cumulative experience and, dem and is able to demonstrate to others through this. Another thing when we're going through the, the research here, uh, employers are saying that college transcript is fairly useful, very fairly useful, um, but actually the electronic portfolio is very useful. So we're happy that that is part of our certificate. So the components of the certificate are then intercultural competence, the language skills, and career readiness. When we were at the end of this, um, we're end of the certificate, the designing of the certificate, and then looking back at what, um, what is deemed workforce success by various entities. It was really rewarding to see that employers really appreciate internship, working with people from diverse backgrounds, a portfolio, and global learning experiences because that is what our, our certificate included. Um, this report is from 2023. It also says the same thing, like completing an internship, working with people from diverse backgrounds, developing a portfolio. It includes requiring sig uh, significant writing. So we feel like we're really on track with helping our students to um, be prepared. And I think that students really like being prepared and being able to say that they have these skills. So um, desirable learning outcomes, once again, based on those essential learning outcomes, we found that 
the students have the ability to effectively communicate orally, communicate in writing, ethical judgment, decision making, ability to apply knowledge and skills to real world settings, to analyze and solve problems with people from different backgrounds. They have awareness of diverse cultures in the United States or in their home country, and they have proficiency in a language other than English. So for the assessment of the Intercultural Competence Certificate we uh, that is measured by the successful completion of all the requirements. So the learning experience is a student has had, accompanied by the reflection, the use of artifacts for required language and elective courses, the success of the CIC required courses, and the e-portfolio. When we, um, we spent time after we, we, <laughs> after we we had the approval of the CIC um, with the rollout that's when we get back to the website that was on the first slide that you saw or the second slide that you saw we have information sessions when the advisors get together and we've created a lot of advising materials for the students but as well as for other faculty who are in the languages who are advising their students as well as those advise those first year or second year advisees who are who are um, working with all sorts of undergraduates. And so I think the success of the CIC can be measured in various ways. This was our, this is our first capstone course and we have four students and those four students will be graduating in May. We have 10 students currently declared. I know of others like coming down the pipeline. The foundational course, the first time we taught it in fall 2022 had eight students and now it has 33. And another thing I wanted to mention, because we had talked about how it fits in with their other concentration, is that the students do a variety of things. They tend, th these that are mentioned here, have uh, majors that have a lot of requirements. So applied math, like biology, computational biology, chemical physics, um, health and human biology. So using the certificate, they don't have, uh, it's just the right amount of room that they have in their schedule. So that has been very successful. Um, next steps, lots of community building, promotion, outreach, um, perhaps, you know, boasting to the, to the administration, um, more outreach to students. This campaign that we have of Think Differently, add a language to your concentration. We'll hope then that will then lead to um, uptake in the uptake uptake in the certificate we also need to continuously work on options to let students know about domestic and international internships but in the end we have the certificate in intercultural competence we think the cic motivates students to enroll and continue in learning languages the cic gives students a rationale and pathway for learning languages it provides a career focused reason to enroll in languages it adheres to high impact practices that significantly benefit student learning and career development and it offers a way to explain and make visible the relevance of language learning to others. The CIRC recognizes the dedication in many semesters of language learning for our non-majors. Um, I want to give a little shout out and give credit where credit is due to my colleagues in, my, in the Center for Language Studies who've worked on um, the certificate. And um, I thank you as well for your interest in this presentation.